so much to everyone who's joining us. My name is Jillian. I'm the founder of Sharks for Kids and really excited to be back hosting another How to Draw a Shark episode. Um, today's going to be a really fun one. Not that they all are fun, but um, and we are welcoming back uh, Dr. Julius Chutney, uh, an amazing scientific illustrator, illustrator biologist as well. So um, kind of wears a lot of different hats and using that science background to now creating amazing illustrations to assist museums, um, scientific organizations, because having a resource, having a visual helps so much, um, especially things like prehistoric animals, um, the shark book you worked on, just a lot of prehistoric species. So really bringing that to life. Um, and also providing all of us with some uh, tools for being a better artist. Uh, you guys have watched me host one of these before, you'll know I do not draw any of the Sharks for Kids stuff. So um, maybe I will start after my, my lessons. Uh, but again, thank you for everyone who's joining us. Um, if you just jumped on, please put your questions in the q and I'll answer if they're kind of shark related stuff I can kind of answer during the session, but we'll also um, ask some of them live at the end. So make sure you stick them in there. And without further ado, uh, let's get drawing. Awesome. Okay, great. Can you hear me okay then? Yeah, sound is great. Super. Right on. Okay, well, thank you very much again, Julian. It's always a pleasure to come here and draw sharks with Sharks for Kids. So much fun. Um, and so, yep, I'm Julius Chitany, and um, so I'm going to be showing us how to draw a particular shark today. And um, so if you brought along your uh, paper and pencils, uh, get them out now. And so I'm going to be drawing using a tablet and stylus on the computer, so you'll get to see it directly uh, as I share the screen. Um, I've set up my screen to match an eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper. So just regular letter size. Uh, and you'll see when I, actually, I'm just going to load that up right now so that we can hear that. Okay. You should be able to see that now. And so uh, what I'd like to do is kind of like the other times, if you have two colors um, or two weights, uh, of pencil or, or pencil and pen or whatever. The first thing that I'm going to do is uh, show us, uh, draw some um, sort of guide shapes that are going to help us to, to you know, um, establish the overall shape and size of the various parts of the shark. And I want to do that in sort of a lighter, either a lighter color if you have two colors or with something that's a little bit uh, easier to even partly erase afterwards. And then afterward, we're gonna uh, join all the lines and make the final details of the shark. And then you wanna do it either heavier or with a darker color or with ink if you have, uh, it make it easier for you to see the, the final version afterwards. So I'm going to do that in red and black. So I'm gonna start with red for the guide shapes and then I'm gonna do black for the final details and that way we can see the difference more easily. Okay, so here we go. Um, I, I wonder if anybody has guessed what kind of shark we're um, gonna be doing today. It's gonna be a really unusual one. As Jillian was saying, um, a lot of people might not have actually heard about this or even the group of sharks that it is. And uh, so it's gonna be hard to guess what it is before I, uh, when, I, when I start, so I'll just give it away now. Um, have and any of you heard of uh, what are called rough sharks? Uh, they're called rough sharks because they have, uh, sharks all have these scales called dermal denticles. And these ones have exceptionally large scales and they're, they're, they're prickly as a result. One of them is even called the uh, prickly dogfish. Um, but what we're going to be doing today is uh, the Caribbean rough shark. So there's five species of rough sharks, all in the genus Oxynotus. And this one is uh, probably my favorite of the group. Uh, partly because it's odd shape, well, they're all odd shapes, uh, but also it's got a beautiful markings. And so this one is gonna be really fun for you to color in afterwards if you like. Uh, and actually there's also a coloring sheet that I did for Sharks for Kids right now featuring this species, but you can do your own. And so we're gonna do it from a different angle than I did for the coloring sheet and then we'll kind of go along from there. So without further ado, I'm gonna get started with the drawing here. So I'm gonna, I've got, you should be able to see the uh, screen here. And oh, there's a little hummingbird outside my window. <laughs> okay, a little bit opposite of sharks. Okay. 
Um, and uh, here we go. I'm going to start to run that layer. Okay, good. So, what, as I mentioned, we're going to start with guide shapes. And this will help us to establish where all the, sh the, the how the shark is going to be organized on the page so we don't run out of uh, space on the page and kind of draw off the side or so on. So when you're doing this, pay attention to where I'm putting it on the page. The first one is uh, we're going to make kind of an egg shape, like a sort of a goose egg, sort of in the middle of the page. And it'll look like this. Start like that. And so it's a little bit a little bit um, wider on the, the right side than on the left. And this back end is a little bit sharper pointed than the right. Like that. Okay, so you see it's, it's sort of in the middle of the page. Takes up about a third of the page in width. And that's going to be our first shape. Doesn't look much like a shark yet. But <laughs> the funny thing about the rough sharks in the genus Oxynotus, um, they are maybe this, one of the, well, one of certainly the strangest shaped sharks uh, in general. They are, are, are these plump little potato shaped, strange little sharks. Um, and so I'm going to give you a little views of, of, of parts of them as I go along. Um, so this is the main part of the body. Uh, and, and, and as I said, it's not actually that far off from the overall shape. Now we're going to add a little bit of a head area. Okay, so we're going to make kind of a little sort of rounded cone. You go to the right side of your shape. I'm going to start like this and make a cone. It comes down and then it's sort of a rounded end and it comes back to here. Uh, you can even join the ends like that sort of thing just if you want to. So it's a little bit smaller than the, well, a lot smaller than that egg or potato in the middle. Um, but uh, that's going to be where the head of the shark is. Now, these sharks have interesting mouths. Um, they, they kind of, they aren't totally flush with the head. They kind of, the, the bottom, the chin is kind of juts out a wee bit. Okay, so I'm going to show that by adding one more shape under the head. So we'll start near the tip of this uh, cone, and you'll kind of make a, a small little shape like this. And it joins up with the egg like that. So that little ledge in the front there represents kind of the chin of the shark, right? Where the, where the mouth uh, kind of closes up against its upper jaw. Uh, interesting thing about these sharks, the, the rough sharks. Now this species, nothing's known about what it eats, but it's got sort of spear-shaped uh, teeth on top and, and sort of larger blade-like teeth in the bottom. And although this one hasn't been observed to feed, one of its relatives, the um, angular rough shark, uh, Oxynotus uh, centrina, uh, has been observed to eat almost exclusively the egg cases of other sharks and rays. So it actually slurps out the centers of these. It's like a candy. Uh, and, and so it's weird. Uh, it seems to specialize on, on egg cases. Okay, now we're going to move to the other end of the body the back end, and we're going to make another, this is going to be sort of a triangle here. You're going to go to the, the back end of the egg where it's a little bit sharper, and you're going to draw a triangle like this. Coming up the back. Still doesn't look much like a shark, but trust me, we're getting there. But you can already see that the overall shape of this, compared to the other ones that, ones that we've drawn, is a lot stouter. And that is very representative of this group. They're really stout, funny-looking little sharks. They're, they're really adorable, I think, actually. They're not what you think of when you hear the word shark, <laughs> normally. Um, so uh, speaking of triangles, uh, this shark and this group of sharks is really neat for one other reason. They have an oddly shaped body, not just from the side, but if you look at them head on, like from the front. If you took a, um, if you looked at them and, and shone a light from the front to, to uh, a backboard behind them, the shark would be triangle shaped. Their cross section is triangle shaped. And so uh, this particular species is interesting because it has skis, basically. <laughs> a shark with, with skis on its body, effectively. It's got little lobes coming down the side of its body on both sides that look, for all the world, almost like skis on a toboggan. So we're going to draw those skis in. Um, little lobes on the side of the body using 
these kinds of little crescent shapes, almost like a banana. I, I use a lot of banana shapes for sharks because it seems like they seem to be very commonly repeated shapes among sharks when we're drawing uh, these guide shapes. So here we go. Along the bottom of your egg, the big egg in the center, we're going to draw kind of a curved crescent or makes kind of a banana shape with the body like that. That. Um, you can even go a little bit up in the tip like that inside. Hey, this is going to be one of those sort of skis on the side of the body that sort of hang down from the body. And then the um, other one. Uh, now, just to give you a, a, a heads up, we're looking at the shark mostly from the side. But to make it more interesting, and because I want to highlight this odd shape of this shark, this sort of triangular shape, we're going to rotate that shark a little bit so that it is, its head is facing a little bit more toward us than is the tail. And so that way, we can see both of these sort of skis on the bottom of the shark, uh, even though we're looking at it mostly from the side. Okay? So the other ski, now we've just drawn the right sort of ski or, or this ridge on the body. Now we're going to draw the left one. And that one is on the other side of the shark, so we're not going to see it as much. But you're going to go to the bottom of the, the big egg near the front. And you're going to draw another rounded sort of crescent shape like this. But when you get to that first one you drew, just stop like that. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, so now we're looking at the bottom of the shark has these strange little ridges. And um, actually, if, if you looked at the shark, from the front, and you don't have to draw this, but I'm just going to kind of give you a little, little quick sketch on the side here to give you an idea. It would look like this. This is what the cross section looks like. And if you look at, and then kind of the dorsal fin comes up like that. Uh, these are these two funny little ridges. Um, normally, the, normally, a shark in, in cross section looks more like this, right? More round or oval. These guys have this strange triangular section. This is the top fin up here, dorsal fin. Um, that's the other thing that you'll see in a second. It has, it's a neat shape. These things are, are enormous dorsal fins. So that's the next thing we're going to draw, actually, is the first dorsal fin. And remember that the dorsal fin of a shark is um, the fin that's on the, the back of the shark, on the top. Dorsal means upper surface. Um, and they have two dorsal fins. One is in the front. And we're going to draw first this guide shape of a triangle. It's a big triangle. And you'll see it's coming out at the top of that, that egg shape. It's up all the way up to here. Oops, I just lost my pencil. And then, then it comes back down like that. Now, we're going to change the shape of that slightly um, when we finalize the details, but that gives us the shape, overall shape, and the size of that dorsal fin. It's huge. It's so tall. Uh, and this is something that's typical of the, of the rough sharks in general. They've got these tall, tall dorsal fins with this really squat, short little body. It's so funny looking for a shark. Uh, the second dorsal fin is also tall. And this is, this is unusual, especially for sharks, because they usually have a big difference in the size of the first and second dorsal fin. Many sharks do. Um, the more the typical shark-shaped ones, the ones that we're familiar with as shark shapes, the ground sharks. But these guys have a tall second dorsal fin. It's like this. This, this is, again, a simplified shape. We're going to fine-tune that later, but that gives us the idea of where it is. As you can already see, this is a really strangely shaped little animal, the way things are starting to develop. Now, sharks also have these pectoral fins, right? They're the equivalent of our arms. Um, that's what, uh, in, in land animals, um, uh, that's the, the kind of fin from which our arms evolved. And so these guys have two, door, uh, two pectoral fins, just like we have two arms. The one on our side of the shark, uh, we're going to start with on the, the shark's right side. Um, and it'll come out of the side of the body. Now, bear with me. This is going to look kind of weird at first, but that's because of the angle of the shark. Start about a little down from the middle of that big egg, uh, near the point where you started with that, that crescent shape for one of the skis of a shark. And it'll go like this. And watch the shape. It's, oops, sorry, I made a mistake there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I erased that. OK, watch the shape. It comes out like this. And it's kind of going to be like, kind of like a needle. Or I think of the Eiffel Tower, <laughs> kind of an Eiffel Tower shape. The reason for that is because this shark is slightly facing toward us, 
and the fins, these pectoral fins, are held out to the side mostly, not very much downward, not very much upward, but mostly out to the side. So we're kind of looking at this fin edge on, um, like this. That's why it's so narrow. So if it were, it is kind of paddle shaped. And if you looked at it from the side, it would look like, like this. In fact, if I could draw a little quick sketch of that, um, of that fin from the side, it would look like this pretty much, pretty long. That would be the side view. But we're looking at it from the front. And so we're looking at, and it gets wider at, at the base here. Now, um, the other uh, piece we're going to add to this is because these, these fins, these pectoral fins, are, are joined to the body mostly at the front, and then there's a little bit of a, a, a lagging kind of a flap at the back end where it joins, we're going to show that on this um, shark by drawing in a kind of, if you watch from the tip of that fin, coming backward, we're going to draw in a little bit of a hanging off bit like that. Because that is sort of the back end of the pectoral fins that's sort of slumping downward a little bit. It's canted in such a way that these fins are used kind of like how airplanes use their wings um, to provide the shark with lift. For, for as it pushes through the water, um, they're kind of ways that the, the, the shark sort of rides the water and, and, and pushes down on the water with these fins and helps to keep it going forward. And so they're slightly tipped upward and forward. Okay, So that's the right pectoral fin. Now the left pectoral fin, um, which is on the other side of the shark, uh, and it, because the shark is rotated a little bit, we can only see a part of it hanging out beyond the other side of the body, over, its, um, uh, over the curve under its belly. And it'll look like this. You start near the bottom of where the head joins the body and make a small sort of round-tipped triangle like this. So it, it's on the other side of the shark, so we're only seeing part of it. It's smaller, therefore, because you know, we're missing the part that's joining the body. Um, so it looks kind of different that way. It'll be a little more obvious once we put in the details of what's going on here. Now, the other fins that this shark has um, are called the pelvic fins. And these are the equivalent of our legs. Um, this, these are the fins uh, that evolved on, in, in land-dwelling animals into their legs, their hind legs. They are near the back end of the shark. And you make a, a triangle near the, the back end of that crescent shape, near the back end of the, the goose egg initially. And it comes out like this. Start there. and out and then goes back into the, that other triangle where it comes out of the back of the body. And that's kind of weird looking, but these guys have little sort of rounded, sort of weird shaped little fins in the back, but they're also kind of, kind of um, angled a little bit in a way so that the front end looks like it's, um, it's a sharper line than it otherwise would be from other angles. So it's just the way we're looking at it, it looks like that. This shark uh, is one of the dogfish. The dogfish are a large group of sharks on an order uh, called the squaliforms. And these guys are in their own family um, called the oxynotidae, the rough sharks. But all dogfish lack what's called an anal fin. That's the other fin that a lot of sharks, like bull sharks or, or hammerhead sharks, have. And it's that little fin that happens just below the tail, just in front of the tail on the bottom side of the shark. Um, not far from where the second dorsal fin would be on top. But dogfish don't have that fin. Other sharks also like angel sharks and saw sharks and prickly sharks don't have that either. Um, and this is something that we, you know, we just don't see in these guys. So we're going to uh, skip on, uh, on that fin. And instead, we're going to go, because it doesn't exist, and we're going to go right to the tail fin or the caudal fin. The caudal fin or tail fin has two lobes, an upper and a lower lobe. We're going to start with, um, uh, with the upper part. And the way we're going to draw this is go to the, that triangle that's the back end of the shark, so the back of the body, and start close to the middle and a little bit out from the middle, a little bit further back from the middle. And we're going to draw a kind of a, uh, kind of a weird part of a triangle, but it's a little bit curved. So watch as I do this. we will start and it'll be a slight curve here, so not a straight line. And then it'll come back down to a very, very slight curve, almost a straight line. And then you bring it back up toward where you started. But you can stop 
at the point where it joins that other triangle. So it's kind of like kind of like a nacho, <laughs> it's like a nacho chip in a way, kind of a, a curved triangle. <laughs> Think of it that way. Okay, so we've got our nacho tail in place, basically. Uh, now, the other thing about uh, these, these tail fins is that that's most of the tail. But we're drawing this shark a little bit rotated away from, from the side. It's, it's looking a little bit toward us, and it's swimming, right? And so sharks use their tail as a paddle to push them forward through the water. And as they do that, that tail swishes back and forth, and the, it bends, right? And um, so we're going to draw it so that the tail is, is uh, bent to one side while it's, it's pushing along like a paddle. So this next part, uh, is the part of the tail that is the upper tip, and it is bent sort of behind the shark. And watch what happens. I'll start at the very top of that nacho chip shape, and I'll continue upward, a little bit curved, and then back down a little bit, and then back down toward the chip like that. So there's, it looks a little bit like a diamond sort of, I guess, a little bit of a curved diamond. And what you're seeing here is that the very top tip, that's the actual end of the tail, the, the top, the end of the, the upper lobe. And then there's this little weird notch that happens um, below it. Um, and uh, that's the, I think, the subterminal flap. Um, and it's kind of where the spine of the shark ends. Uh, it doesn't end at the very tip of the tail. Uh, so that, that spine would continue, basically. Um, and the, sort of the body of the shark, in a sense, uh, ends at that point. And, uh, we're actually going to represent that by showing uh, a little bit of that, that where the spine of the shark would go. So go back to the, that lower triangle at the back of the body um, and inside of the nacho chip, start and draw a little line that goes up like this and follow well, basically along the same way as the upper part of the nacho chip. And then at the end here, we turn back and make a wee little bump outside of the nacho chip and come back down to join the body. So that's a thickened area on the tail. Um, it, it, it basically thickens there compared to the, the sort of the flappy parts of the, the tail above it and below it. And that is where normally the shark's uh, spine would go. And that actually continues if you wanted to draw another little wee bit of a line from the tip of that nacho to that little notch that I talked about. And ends like that, a teeny little triangle, because that's where that ends. And, it, and what I'm showing here is that the tail, the tip of the tail is bent around behind the shark. That's why we're seeing that, that spine area curving like that. So that makes it a little bit more dynamic. It shows us a swimming shark, a little more interesting than just kind of hovering. So that is where we are now. Now we're going to need a couple of other little things. Um, for the, um, the dorsal fins, the fins on top of the shark, these guys are neat also, because like a lot of other dogfish, they have these spines, these sharp spines on the front of the dorsal fin. Um, it's a great form of protection in case a predator wants to eat them. Um, it's a sharp pointed spine. Some types of sharks have a poisonous spine, actually, so you have to be very careful. Um, for shark researchers who are, who are handling them, in some cases, if they have to, um, for tagging and so on, you have to be careful with these spines. So what we're going to do is this, these, these dorsal fins are kind of thin, but they have a thickened area on the front that has the spine at the tip. And we're going to show that. Go to the front, to this first dorsal fin, the big triangle on top, and start at the bottom near the, uh, along the, the egg shape. And then we're going to go up the, in a line that's sort of parallel or in the same direction as the back end of that triangle up to the top right here. And at the end here, draw a tiny little triangle, and that's the spine. It's not a big spine, but this whole front area um, in the triangle is a thickened area, basically. So the, the back end of it, the back part of that triangle, the big triangle, is kind of a thinner flap of tissue, thinner flap of the fin. And the similar thing happens at the second dorsal fin, but that thickened area is a little bit smaller. So you see, we're going to draw a smaller triangle here at the second dorsal fin like that. And again, at the tip of this thickened area, 
there's another spine. It's also not a very big spine. Some sharks have an enormous spine uh, at these points. So for example, the viper dogfish, which is a really neat little deep water species, has an enormously long spine on the second dorsal fin, basically just about as long as the fin itself. So yeah, the predators would have to be careful if they tried to bite it. <laughs> so uh, be nasty surprise. Okay, so that's our dorsal fins there. Now this shark needs um, an eye um, and what's called a spiracle. Okay, so the eye is about here. You're going to draw a small oval right here in the head. So it's just behind where the mouth starts. And part of the reason is because that shark is a little bit rotated away, uh, rotated toward us. And there's also an iris or a pupil. So the inside of the eye is, is round. That is where light would go into the eye um, and would travel to the back of the shark's eye to the retina, which is where it actually collects the light and sends that information to the brain. Uh, these, this shark actually, interestingly, has a relatively small eye compared to others of, uh, of its relatives, the, the rough sharks. Most rough sharks have enormous eyes, and this is something we see in a lot of deep water sharks because you'd think that it's so pitch black down in the deep ocean that there's no reason for uh, animals to have eyes. But in fact, these live in a part of the water column where there's still a little bit of feeble sunlight coming in from above. And um, so they, they can actually use that light and, and they have extraordinarily sensitive eyes in many cases, can pick up really, really low light. Uh, and it's important because some animals can hunt that way by looking up at the uh, the light coming down from below and look for shadows, silhouettes of animals that are above them. And that's how they hunt in some cases. Uh, these ones are probably different, but they can use that little bit of light coming down. So that's the eye. And then behind the eye is a little kind of a hole in the, in the head. This is a, called a spiracle. And it's a small sort of roundish thing right around behind the eye like that. And um, many sharks who, who live on the bottom and who spend a lot of time on the, sitting on the bottom of the, uh, of, of the seabed um, need to keep breathing while they're, they're sitting there. And these holes are additional ways for the water to, to um, uh, flow past the, the gills of the shark so that they can continue to breathe. Um, sharks have to pass water over the gills to, to breathe. And so these are additional things that help them to breathe when they're not swimming actively in some cases. These are not large on this shark but there's some that for which they are large. Okay, so now um, we have uh, the nostrils. Now, these guys have amazingly large nostrils. These guys are, have a pretty impressive uh, snout. Uh, the way we're gonna do this is near the front of the, of the snout, you're gonna make kind of like a, a, like a nine shape, I guess. Um, start like, like this, comes up, and then sort of a round bit like that, kind of a nine, and then, uh, at the, there's a notch kind of down below it, kind of like a little check mark almost. And then that's the nostril on our side. Well, that round shape is the nostril. And then there's this flap of, of, of tissue, kind of like little barbells that hang down from the front of the nostrils. Uh, and then on the other side of the shark, there's another flap. You can't see the nostril because of the, the, the snout, um, the tip of the nose, but you can see the, the flap coming down like that. Uh, they're neat. They're just such weird looking little features with that, that flap hanging down. In some sharks, uh, like the, um, <clears throat> the uh, oh, what's it called? The uh, mandarin dogfish, they have such long barbells, they're called, uh, these flaps, they can actually use them to hunt for prey um, by using them to sort of feel really neat. Uh, then the other thing that the shark needs are gills, right? Because as I mentioned, it needs to breathe. And sharks remove oxygen from the water. Uh, with the tissue in their gills. And these have little gills, actually, the, the rough sharks. We're gonna draw, there's five of them, just like there are five species of rough sharks. Uh, most sharks have five gill slits, and you're gonna make five little slits. The first one is here, in front of the, the pectoral or arm sort of ends. Then the last one will be here, just where, where the pectoral fins begin. And then you'll put three in between them. So one right in between, and then one in between each of those, like that easiest way to draw uh, gill slits to keep them evenly spaced is to draw the end ones, then the middle one, and then the two middle in between the others. It's one way to do it. And the, the end one, the back one, is a little bit smaller than the front ones. 
So that's there. And one last thing that we needed for our shark before we can put the final little details to connect all the shapes is what's called a lateral line. Sharks have this, this sensitive bit of tissue along the side of their body that helps them to sense vibrations in the water. And many of them use that to help them find their prey. And so when fish are kind of struggling, if there's an injured fish in the water or, or just swimming around, they're making, they're beating the water and they're sending out these pulses of, 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 of pressure in the water. And that pressure hits the side of the shark at this lateral line and the shark senses it and can tell when something is moving in the water. So it goes like this. We'll start near the front of that, that large potato or egg shape and we'll kind of make a curved line that goes along the side of the body and comes down again a little bit like that. That's about where the lateral line is. Uh, and it's actually also a bit of a groove there. The other thing is that these, this sharks, the, uh, this rough shark here has a little bit of a, a groove also that comes from the pelvic fin. Remember the back ones near where the legs are in, in, in land animals? And we'll go to the tip of that, that littler triangle and go a little bit forward like this, part of the way, about halfway through, because that's also a groove. And they have a strangely shaped body. And if, if I go back to this, this um, cross section that I drew up here, um, that's kind of like a cross section through, through that first dorsal fin, that tall dorsal fin. But if we were to take a, a cross section near the, the back end of the shark at the second dorsal fin, near the, where the pelvic fins are, I'm just going to overlay it. It would look like this. Uh, oops, got a big line there. I'm going to have to go back. Yeah. There we go. It would look something like this, and there would be this bit of a groove here. And then you have that other funny little roofs of that, the skis that I talked about. And there's the second dorsal fin comes up like that. So they have a um, strange shaped body <laughs> if you look at them head on or, or tail on. So there we have all of the guide shapes in place. Now what I'd like you to do is shift over to your other color or the darker color or, or ink if you have. Um, you can even sort of treat these lines as something that you can maybe sh erase out a little bit after you do it, if you can, or lighten them somewhat, um, because you want to make sure that the next lines that we draw, which are the final ones, are going to be easy to see, because this will be your final drawing. And I'm going to shift over actually to another layer. I'm going to put this in black so that it's easy to see the difference between the lines that we drew to guide us and now the final uh, lines. Okay. And so what we're going to do, these, these guide shapes we drew are actually pretty good at, at um, describing the shape of the shark. So there's not going to be a lot of extra work here at all, but we're going to fine tune a few things in outline. I'm going to start with the first dorsal finish. The base at the front there, we're just going to be, oops, my pen keeps on cutting things. We're going to start at the, the front end of that dorsal fin and go and basically follow along the line that we did um, up toward that uh, first um, spine, and then give that little notch of a spine there like that, right? Maybe a little sharper point than that, okay? And then we'll continue up toward the top of the fin, but pay attention here. There's going to be a little bit of a difference in shape. Remember I said we're gonna fine tune that? So watch what I do. There's going to be a little bit more curvature here. The will curve a little bit backward from the tip. You see in the tip actually is a little bit behind the tip of that triangle. And then it's kind of got a sharp, sharpish point, but it's a little bit curved as well, like that. So we kind of curve back like this, and it'll end about where we drew the, whoa, <laughs> the bottom. Sorry, I didn't mean to draw that last line. There we go. It's almost, I'll just erase out the funny line. Every once in a while, my computer does funny things with these lines, but that's okay. There. And then if you want, we can also add a, a wee bit of a notch here because remember I said that that back end of the fin is, is sort of loose and there's a bit of a flap where the fin joins the body like that. You can also draw that light line, lighter than that. <laughs> there we go. A light line coming back along the back end of that thickened area of the fin like this. Okay, so that's the first dorsal fin. And remember I said before that these have these enormously, wonderfully tall dorsal fins, especially for a short, squat little shark like this. It's, it's unusual to find dorsal fins of this height in most sharks, but these guys are strange looking. Okay, we're gonna do a similar thing with the second dorsal fin. I'm gonna start at the base here and follow it up to the spine, 
make the little sharp pointed spine, uh, empty predator defense. And then again, toward when you go up to the tip of the fin, it'll kind of curve a little bit away and then curve back inward and go a little bit inside the triangle and then it'll end down here at the bottom. And there's that little bit of a flap and that line that joins that sort of the thickened part where the spine starts down toward the body. There, now we have our dorsal fins. Now what we're gonna do is complete the sort of the upper uh, body line of the shark. And we're gonna start at the base of the tail and go forward. So we're gonna start right here where this nacho shape starts and go forward from there. Whoops. And just kind of follow along that line, but we're gonna smooth that, that place where it joins the potato or the goose egg. And then, you know, you don't have to draw it in underneath the, the front part of the dorsal fin if you want, it doesn't matter, it's okay. There's a little bit of a groove there anyway, but whether you draw it in or not, the body, it's okay, because we'll continue at the front of this second dorsal fin, go forward, toward the first dorsal fin and join where the flap meets the body and stuff there. You could draw a little dotted line maybe on, on the bottom of this, the bottom of the fin like that. It's not even really that necessary because that's not much of a group there. And then at the front of that first dorsal fin, we'll continue down toward the head. Now here, notice where the two connect, you wanna smooth that out a little bit. It's not as sharp at angles. That smooths out a little bit. Continue along the front to the snout and then down under the snout. You can draw over that, that left nostril, but now stop here at this, this flap coming down on our side. Uh, and you continue down to the flap, along the flap to the tip of the flap, and then up toward the nostril and continue that rounded shape because these things have this wonderfully big nostril. Um, for sharks, that's, that's a very large nostril. And when you look at them from the front, they're, they're wonderfully goofy looking. If I were to draw a quick little cross section of the head, looking at it like from the nose onward, it would look something like this. Uh, you don't have to draw this, but I'll just kind of draw it to make it show us what it looks like. Uh, it, there's the head. The, the eyes are sort of visible a little bit from the side. That, remember I mentioned, they're not too huge for this kind of group of sharks. And then the bottom, that's sort of the little mouth would look sort of like this. They have actually a really cute mouth. Uh, and then the nostrils are these big, big, really neat little nostrily thing. And they have this, these flat, whoops. <laughs> Sorry, my computer did a funny thing again. I'll try to I'll undo that little funny line there. They have this big flap coming down on one side and then the other nostril and the big flap. And the, let's see if I can think in reverse here. There we go. This other nostril comes like that. And these two triangles are the flap. And so, yeah, and then there's the rest of the body right around it like that. Anyway, they look weird from the front and the snout, like the tip of the snout would be here. And then there's, you know, rounded. They're funny. They're really neat. I love these sharks. Hey, we're going to draw in the other flap on the other side uh, of the underneath the nostril. But you can't see the nostril because it's behind the, sort of the snoot in the front. Now we're going to continue. We're going to put the mouth in, but pay attention to this. It's a little bit different from the outline we put. You see where the chin starts? Start there, but the mouth goes a little bit upward from there. It's got a wee bit of a smile. So start at that point where the chin meets and it's gonna go a little bit upward like that. And then we're connected to the, where that flap from the nostril comes down. And now we're gonna draw in the chin. The chin comes like, starts here and then comes back downward toward the body. This, we'll stop there. You see, so the mouth kind of, the mouth of these guys is neat. Uh, we're only seeing a little bit of them from the side, but if I were to draw, and you don't have to draw this, but I'll just draw it from underneath, this is what the head would look like. Um, there's a, sorry, the tip of the, the tip of the snout kind of narrow is a bit like this. And then uh, these are the, the nostrils here. And there's that sort of flap that comes down kind of like this. Another flap and another nostril it's from underneath. And then the mouth of these guys is funny. Uh, there's a part that kind of comes back 
where it hinges, the jaws hinge. Um, but then the mouth itself is relatively small. And they've got these lips kind of, it looks like lips. Um, this, uh, keep getting thick lines. Okay, there we go. And so the, actually the mouth, it looks like it has lips kind of. Um, and you can actually see some of the small teeth <laughs> inside of the jaws. Um, but they have this little mouth, basically. That's what we're seeing here, actually, is this little bit. You can even little, give it a little bit of that, like that lower sort of lip-like thing almost. There's the head. Uh, we're drawing the eye. Uh, it oval-shaped overall, right? And some of these have much larger eyes. And then the, the, the pupil, which is the black part of our eye, is round in this guy's. And I don't think in this species it is, but in some species of deep water sharks, when you shine a light on them, that pupil um, reflects green light coming from the retina of the shark. So the, our pupils look black, but you know how when you take a photo of somebody and you get like the, the red eye uh, effect, it's similar sort of a thing that happens, that's light reflected from the back of the eye. And it's red because there's, there's a lot of blood in our, our, uh, in our vessels, in our blood vessels behind our eye. But sharks have a special highly reflective layer of, of stuff at the back of their eye when they're deep water sharks. And that reflects green um, or, or different kind of colors, but often green. And so sometimes deep water sharks have this weird green colored pupil. These guys, I think, don't usually, but uh, it maybe depends on the angle. Anyway, then there's the spiracle behind the eye. It's a little sort of a circle-y kind of a thing here. It's a little black hole. Now we're going to put in the rest of the bottom side of the body of the shark. This is a weird one now. Watch what happens here. Where I have started this line, I'll continue to those funny ski skids. We're going to smooth out that connection a little bit and go backward along that, the left side sort of ski. And we'll stop at the right one where it joins. And I'm going to start where that right one starts underneath the pectoral fins. And it'll be a little bit of a notch like that and just follow along that funny shaped crescent along the bottom of the body like this. And it ends here, but we'll continue and smooth out this point to the back for the tail like that. And we'll actually continue this line all the way up along this sort of spine that we drew, right? And since we're at the top of this spine now where it meets the rest of the tail, we'll continue it downward to where we started our, our line at the top of the shark, like this. So we have kind of that thickened part of the body. And now we have these weird little ski things. And you can put in a dotted line at the part of the bottom of that big goose egg you drew first, Be, uh, right in front or above that left side ski. So like this, a little bit of a dotted, or a light, cut, light line, a very fine line, because there's, these are those, remember these are those lobes coming down on each side of the body and, and you have a little bit of a groove there. That's what we're showing. Uh, we're gonna add that um, pectoral fin on the far side of the shark, the arm effectively. Just kind of do the same shape as we had there, very easy. That's, that's like that. Now for the pectoral fin on our side, uh, we're gonna follow that line pretty well, except, so we're gonna start from the top, that Eiffel Tower shaped line kind of thing, or that, that pin, the needle shape, go down along it. But now we're going to follow that second line we drew, which is kind of like that little bit of a curve down and it joins and then it kind of comes to this base here. And then you can draw a little bit of that line that we drew um, that, that's missing there right now, but just lightly or a dotted line because what we're seeing here is the front edge of the fin. It's a little bit, it's rounded. Kind of like if, if I were to show you my hand, the front end, it's still rounded a little bit. It's not a blade, sharp blade, um, but you're still seeing it sort of edge on. Okay. Now we have the pelvic fins, or in this case, it, there are two pelvic fins, but because of the angle of the shark that we're looking at, we can only see the one on our side. And so that's that funny little triangle shape at the back here. We'll start at the base of that ski shape, and then we're going to come out, and it's it's pretty much like we drew it. And there would actually be a little bit of a flap at the back here where it joins. Uh, whoops. You can't really see that because it's, it's under the body of the shark a little bit, but like the front um, pectoral fins, there's also a little bit of a, a trailing edge of these fins that doesn't connect to the body directly. 
uh, the tail, the caudal fin is what it's called. Um, we're going to finish off the edge of that. Now we're going to start at the bottom near where the, bo the shark's body starts um, and then, or where, where it leaves the body. And we're going to go up along that slightly curved nacho line that we drew and continue it right to the tip of the tail there. And then down from there toward that notch where the spine actually ends and then down and continue that right up to where it meets the rest of the tail fin back. You can actually add that little bit of that, that tip of the spine that we drew before, because that actually is visible. And there's a piece here that's missing now. You see where, where we need to connect that line at the very back end of the tail to the spine that's curving around like that. And there's one last piece to add, and that's the lower lobe, the bottom uh, lobe of this tail fin or caudal fin. And we'll start at the bottom of the body and come down and just slightly curve the uh, tip of it, not completely sharp, and comes back up like that. And there you have it. Oh, yes, there's two last things that we need, right? We need the um, lateral line and the gills, finish the gills, so that when we erase out those lines, we have the actual final lines. So the gills, just follow what you did before, trace over those, one, two, three, four, five gills. Remember, these sharks have five gills, like all dogfish. Um, most sharks have five gill slits. The frill sharks have six. Two species of those. Uh, the seven gilled sharks, um, two species of those, have seven gills. And then the six gills, as the name suggests, uh, and there are three species now of those, um, uh, have six gills as well. And one other shark, the six gill saw shark, has six gills because it just wants to be its own thing, right? And then now we have our lateral line. Uh, trace over what we do there before, that curved line along the side of the body. You can even put in a dotted line of that groove coming in from the pelvic fin along the front of the, toward the front of the body like that. That is gonna be the, the shape. Now I'm gonna just show you, if I turn off, and you can erase out the, the guidelines you did if you want to. Uh, if I turn off my guidelines, this is what it looks like. See, that's the final shape of the shark. And you can see now nicely how that bottom of the body looks weird, doesn't it? With those two sort of skis, that's kind of part of that, that triangular shape. Um, if I were to add a couple of details to make it more obvious, um, I could do it like this. You can or, or you don't have to, um, but I'm just gonna add, just kind of make it look like there's a little bit of an, a groove here maybe. And then if, I'll, I'll do this later and I'll, I'll upload as well the shaded version so you can see how all these different weird uh, sides of the shark interact. But, but for now, that kind of gives it to us. The last thing that we can do, if you want to, is remember I mentioned this shark has an interesting color pattern? I love this shark for this reason. It's beautifully patterned. Uh, if you want to, we can add the, the markings. And uh, I have a version of this on a coloring sheet on the Sharks for Kids uh, activities. Um, uh, coloring sheets uh, side as well. But if you want to, we can add uh, some of these, just the outline of these color patterns, and then you can color this in if you like. It, they have these, mostly it's a light colored sort of creamish gray colored shark, and it has these sort of dark brown patches on its body, patches and spots. Uh, and I'm gonna put these in red actually, oopsie, just so that you can see what's happening differently from the outline. There's one sort of stripe that comes in front of the eye, like that, and then there's a stripe behind the eye, like this, like that, and you can find it. And then there's this, a stripe in the center of the head, right down the, the top of the head, that kind of comes like this. And if I were to find it right up to the, almost the tip of the snout. Then there's a bunch of spots. Uh, and different sharks have different spots, different individual sharks have different spots here but there's a bunch of spots of different sizes along near the and above the pectoral fins. And then there's this really recognizable saddle shape on the, on the side of the shark. Uh, from the top of the body, it kind of comes down like this up to the lateral line and there's a gap. And then the, on the top, it kind of is a little bit of a gap too. And then it continues below the lateral line and another big splotch of dark brown color and I'm, I'm outlining it now here that looks something like this. 
And then of course this top part of the saddle has like white or light colored spots, like the base color of the shark on it. Like they look like they're holes in it. <laughs> it's like Swiss cheese almost. And then the, the, the first dorsal fin and the second dorsal fin both have this sort of a dark area. Put line it kind of like this. And then there's another little bit of a dark patch on the bottom of, of the outside of these sort of ski shapes on the bottom. The pelvic fin has a dark sort of a splotch in the middle like that. And the bottom of the tail, lower lobe of the tail has a little bit of a darker spot. And then there's a little bit of a patch back here under the second dorsal fin and a few more spots underneath that. Uh, and, you know, spots here and there, a little bit of spots on the body here and there. It's a really neatly colored shark. And if you see photos of this, and, and Jillian has described that um, her friend has, uh, has taken photo or videos even of this shark. Um, if, you can, if you get a chance to see them, or if you, and you can also um, search for this uh, shark's name online. There's some beautiful pictures of it. Um, it's really worth seeing photos of it. It's a spectacular looking little shark. The deep water shark living about you know, 200 to 500 meters deep. Uh, which is like about 600 feet to about maybe 1,500 feet or so uh, and on, on continental shelves or, or uh, slopes, which are like the mountain sides of, of, of where the land goes down from into the deep ocean. So that is our Caribbean rough shark. Uh, it's done now. Uh, you've drawn uh, one of the weirdest looking little sharks that there is, and it's really tiny. It's only about as big as your arm. Uh, about 1.7 feet or um, maybe about half a meter long. Uh, really small little shark. It's harmless, basically. Uh, and uh, you wouldn't see them normally anyway, but they're really gorgeous animals. So that's it. Um, I'm going to stop sharing my screen, and then uh, we can take questions. And uh, Duncan is here. Hey, guys. How's it going? Sorry, I just had to run off on another uh, Zoom call quick. So... Uh, yeah, I've got the questions to go for you. Although, I'll show how far she got. She, did, she was drawing along quite a... Well, Let's see if I can see that. that. It's like, a, well, uh, she got pretty far along. a really good job. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe keep it in front yeah. of me? <laughs> 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 I'm not entirely sure what's going on. Incredible there. vanishing part. <laughs> for sure. Um, well, yeah, that was a great little sharky to draw. Um, it reminds awesome. me a little bit of a prickly dogfish, actually. Yeah, very, very similar. Very, very chubby little shark as well. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Those are neat, aren't they? Yeah, yeah, they're very chunky. Yeah. It's so interesting. Yeah, I would love to see one, but yeah. It's oh. A little bit deep. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah uh, hard to get there. All right, question time. Okay. Are you ready? Awesome. All right. You perfect. bet. Let me see what we've got. Um, Sydney, uh, this is probably one of her favorite questions. She's been uh, adding on. Um, this question to quite a few of our, our Zoom guests, which is why did you choose this job? Why did you decide to be a illustrator? Ah, well, that's a great question actually, because I started out as a scientist. Um, and uh, so I, I trained as a scientist and part of what I did uh, was really fun is I got to work on the deep ocean at hydrothermal vents, uh, where some of these animals live in the, the deep parts of the ocean, is a really neat area. Uh, but I was always interested in drawing and I was drawing since I was three years old. And so that was something that I'd had as a hobby for a long time. And I did a lot of practice on it. But at one point, um, I was contacted by a publishing company because I had put some of my drawings online on my website and they'd seen this. And um, uh, the author, uh, who's Dougal Dixon, uh, sort of a hero of mine, uh, had uh, asked, uh, they asked if I was interested in doing a dinosaur encyclopedia to, to illustrate it. And I thought, yeah, <laughs> I've never done this before as, as a job. And so because I had a lot of practice, I tried it uh, and it worked out really well. And it just really went from there. And I found it to be so much fun. And the reason that I love to do this, and the reason why I didn't continue in science specifically, although I, I really enjoyed science as well, is I get to do sort of both of what I love. I work with scientists closely, and so I get to uh, see what they're doing and what they're publishing in their research papers, and I get to work with them to illustrate what it is that they find in their, their scientific studies and to show that to the public visually to help to make their research more visible to the public. And so that helps science, and it, it helps me because I get to learn and I get to have a foot in both camps, and that's why I love doing what I do. 
That's awesome. Yeah, I think I think it's 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 hard because obviously the way that a lot of science is written is is quite hard to kind of digest sometimes. So it sure, definitely sure. helps. Uh, the media definitely helps kind of push out the message and make it a little bit more user friendly to everybody out definitely. there. Um, you got to be creative. Yeah. What about what's your best? Quite a few people are asking this. Is what is your best tips for drawing? Like. Oh, yeah, that's a good question, actually. So that's, that's a very wide one as well. Um, really, I think if, if I were to choose one really good tip, um, this is something that has helped me a lot as an artist and that helps me now actively all the time. When you are looking at something, the best way to learn to draw is to look at, uh, let's say, a model or the actual animal. If you go to the zoo or an aquarium or if you can find animals in the wild, um, you know, safely, <laughs> uh, wherever you can see living animals, try to draw them from life. Um, it, it's, you get a better idea of how, how they fill space. There's three dimensions. Um, and it's easier, it's, it's, more, it's more informative to your brain than, than taking off a photograph, for example. Um, if you can, it's really helpful. Uh, on top of that, if you only have photographs to work with, try to turn, <laughs> this is going to be hard to say, try to turn off the part of your brain that is, is trying to interpret that for what it is and try to break it down into simple shapes. That's why uh, we did this exercise this way by starting with guide shapes. Try in your mm -hmm. mind to look at a shark and see not the dorsal fin as a dorsal fin because your mind is going to try to suggest what it thinks a dorsal fin should look like and that may or may not be accurate. Try to see it as the simplest shape you can imagine. Try to see triangles in it. Try to see squares or diamonds in it. Try to break it down in your mind. That's what I do actively when I look at something to try to make it look as, as much like the real thing as possible. I actively try to break it down into the simplest shapes I can. That is the, the best way I find to try to make things as accurate as possible. Sometimes people like to turn a photograph upside down and start drawing upside down because that helps to sort of break the connection of your mind with that object as much as possible. That helps too. So that's one good tip. And there's lots of others, but that's a good one to start with, I think. Yeah, it's tricky trying to, trying to uh, draw things upside down. Like I have a problem, like whenever I draw, I always, for some reason, I always have to have the shark's head to the left of screen. And then, oh, right. Like, I, I, sure. I don't know. It's, sure. I have like a, a difficulty drawing images that are going this way for some reason. This way. You, um, you're right-handed, right? Because right? I yeah, right you think maybe that's why? Because um, then you can, I wonder if that's part of the reason because it, you, you'd be covering the shark. If you're going from the front of the shark backward, it's easiest yeah. to see it if you have the snout on one side and you move away from it. Maybe that's why. I tend to draw them more toward the right. Yeah. And I'm left-handed. And uh, I wonder okay. if that's why. <laughs> so, oh, that's interesting. Yeah, it could be. Yeah, so you're not plowing through the paper, but pulling along. Yeah. The beauty of Photoshop is I can always flip it. <laughs> yeah, that's true. And actually, that's a good tip too. A lot of um, artists say that what you can do is take a mirror, if you're yeah. drawing on a paper, and hold it to the side and try to draw looking at the mirror so you see it in reverse. Um, yeah. That also helps to kind of break things down. It's a little bit harder to draw that way, but um, yeah. you, know, you can also just view it in reverse to see if it looks logical or makes sense. Yeah, for sure. That, that's pretty cool. I didn't think about the mirror tip before. Um, I think uh, you may have asked this before in one of your previous talks, but what is your most challenging shark to draw? What's the hardest one to draw? That's a really good question. Um, so typically, I think the most challenging ones are the ones that have the really odd shapes and especially the complex shapes. Now, this was a really good example of one with a really complex shape. It starts out with kind of a wide snout, then it goes triangular, and then it goes in a different kind of triangle and then there's a groove in it and then there's a round part in the back. It's like, if you rotate the shark, it looks different from every angle. Um, and so that, those ones are challenging. The other ones that I find really challenging are the ones that have really complex shapes like carpet sharks, like the wobegongs. Those ones are neat, right? Because they've got that frill uh, along the, the front of their mouth and the, the front of their head because it helps them to blend in so beautifully with the, with the, the seabed. But that frill is pretty hard to, to get because it's very, very complicated in its shape. Uh, that's a complex and, and a difficult shark to draw. Yeah, for sure. I, I can imagine, especially with the textures involved there too as well. Right. Oh, right, the color patterns. Oh, wow, they're beautiful. Let, the carpet shark is a good term. <laughs> so. uh, 
All right. Um, and I'm sure you, I think I'm pretty sure you answered this one previously on another webinar as well, but your favorite shark to draw. Favorite shark to draw. Yeah. That, that always changes, I guess. Um, I, I love, I think one of the things about, and this probably comes from my biological background. I really love diversity or, or the, the, the sum of all the different kinds of animals. And I love the fact that there are so many, that there are over, what is it? 553 or 554 species of sharks now described or something like that. I've got a list going that, and there's some wonderful lists out there. And I, it's, it's amazing it, that I love the fact that there are so many. Um, so it's hard to pick a favorite, <clears throat> but, and, and I love the fact that there are different shapes. And so uh, I think that some of my favorite sharks though, uh, include some of the weird ones like the six scale shark. Um, it's just a, such a neat looking animal. Uh, some of the, the really, really sleek ones though too, the ground sharks or the requiem sharks, which are things like the bull shark oh, or the, the copper shark is a beautiful one or the bronze whalers. It's also called colors really nice on some of indi the individuals. Um, some of the hammerheads like the great hammerhead are beautiful because they've got this wonderfully long fins. Um, I guess shorter pectoral fins, but really long, tall dorsal fins, long tail fin and everything. Those are really nice and elegant looking, I think. And the winghead shark, the, one of them that we did for one of these drawing sessions, is the, the hammerhead with the longest uh, cephalofoil or, or hammer. Uh, amazing looking. So I, I love that for sure. Those are some of my favorites. Yeah, they're, they're, they're pretty cool. And, and that's, that's another hard effect to, uh, to give to these, these drawings is actually, um, actually showing some sort of shine and sheen on some of these is, is pretty right. tricky. Right. Yep, exactly. And, and it'll look different depending on whether it's underwater or it's breaking the surface of the water, uh, all these wonderful things, or how it looks in water at different uh, distances and all that. I remember the first time I saw a shark when I was swimming, uh, the very first one I saw, all I saw was a tail and the anal fin and the pelvic fins, uh -huh. and then it kind of vanished the first part because it was already swimming into the, into the murk uh, in, in the reefs below me. And it was just far enough away that I was, it was just at the border of visibility and I could see the tail, I saw the shape, and I saw the coloration, so I thought, aha, it's a gray reef shark, because it had a very typical kind of a dark line on the back, but that was all, and it was gone a couple of seconds later, but I was so happy to be able to see the first shark. <laughs> so, so uh, yeah, water does neat things to color. Uh, so, so Sorry, that was a bit of a tangent, but I was it's, it's so no, excited. No, 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 no. Especially that you think about an, an animal can look very different at different depths. Um, What's your favorite medium to, uh, to work with apart from uh, online digital, I guess? Right, right, right. Yeah, and, and, and really I, I do uh, digital drawing and painting mostly because uh, it's the most effective way to work, uh, I find, for scientific illustrations because it's easier to change it uh, if it needs to be changed. And a lot of the time that needs to be changed if new data, new information comes in or if you know, I have to review the, the the uh, drawing as I go with scientists to update it. It's easier and it's quicker in some ways. But I love to work with, um, uh, there's a couple of things I really enjoy. I like uh, acrylics, acrylic paint. And that's what I do for a lot of the fundraisers that I do live because it dries so quickly. Um, but I love oils. Oils are, oh, you're just so beautiful to work with. Uh, that's one of my favorites. And pastels, uh, especially dry pastel. Just beautiful to work with. And if you have a chance to try dry pastel on black velour paper, kind of like a velvet paper, it's amazing, especially really soft pastels. It's just beautiful to work with. So those are some of my favorites. Uh, we've got a guy called Roman who's asking, have you found any shark teeth? And uh, what's the biggest shark tooth you've ever found? Ooh, good question. I've never actually found shark teeth myself, um, uh, which is interesting because I guess I have not gone to too many places where I can find them. And I have, I've not dived, I've, I've snorkeled. Uh, so I don't get to the bottom very much, which is where you would find shark teeth, right? Where they're, they're shed by the sharks and they sink to the bottom. So it's usually further away from me than I have access to, because if sharks are in that area, they're typically in deeper parts than I would normally swim, except for the, the black dip reef sharks that I encountered as well last year. It's all a coral reef there, so it's really hard to see anything on the bottom other than coral reef. 
and it's also usually a little deeper. Uh, I have seen a lot of uh, sharp teeth, mostly fossils, actually. <laughs> um, and, and of those ones, the biggest ones, uh, I've, I've seen some, uh, now they're called Otodus megalodon or Carcharocles megalodon, the megatooth shark. And those are amazing, right? I mean, some of them can be the size of your hand, single tooth. Um, those are like whale-sized sharks that lived uh, during, say, the Miocene period, uh, so a few million years ago. But uh, they were just amazing. So those are spectacular. Yeah, I can't even imagine being in the water with an animal that size if they were still still around. Uh, it's just, the, I mean, the jaws of some of these were about ten feet wide. Oof, yeah. <laughs> it's just amazing. And this, uh, and for this last question, I, I kind of think this would be quite a fun activity to do anyhow. Um, <laughs> would be if, uh, if you had to design your own shark with different elements of another shark, what sharks would you put in there and which bits would be there? You know, like, oh, that's an interesting yeah. question. So like what, what, it kind of brings out what are kind of the things that you like about sharks, what, what are the most aesthetically pleasing, the most interesting looking or, 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 or you know, favorite aspects of sharks. That, that's a neat one, actually. If I were to design a shark, um, I mean, I like... I, I really enjoy the uh, seeing the, like, the sleek ones, I guess. So it would probably be a longer shark. Um, it would have a long uh, upper lobe to its tail, I guess, kind of like the great hammerhead has, uh, and, and maybe a shorter lower lobe. Uh, it would have um, maybe tall dorsal fins uh, and pretty long uh, pectoral fins. Uh, yeah. Um, it would be colorful. <laughs> I love color. I think it would be very interestingly patterned. It would have, uh, I mean, there's some spectacular patterns in some of the carpet sharks, some of the, the related, uh, the smaller car carpet shark relatives and some of the cat sharks and, and many of those other ones. They're just spectacular colors. And even the one we looked at today here was just beautiful the markings, uh, the patterns. So that would be some of the things I would, um, I would think would have a long snout. Um, there's some beautiful, like, Spinner sharks have these beautifully long snouts. <laughs> oh, and, and then there's the, like the bird beak dogfish, uh, and a member of the genus Denia. These have amazingly long snouts. The one that I used for the um, on the link that I advertised for this uh, for this uh, event, and actually I have one of them in the the coloring sheets for sharks for kids. Uh, the is it the arrowhead dogfish or the bird beak dogfish? And they have these beautifully long, long uh, spatula shaped uh, noses. They're just funny looking. But they're also a short squat shark, kind of like these um, uh, these sharks. Otherwise, the rough sharks. Awesome. Uh, well, if if if, uh, if any of you guys out there uh, want to uh, design your own shark, definitely give it a shot. Draw it. That is a neat uh, idea. If you send it to us or tag us on Facebook, well, share it as well. And let, let let's see what you guys come up with. Um, and then I think that's pretty much all we've got time for at the moment. So if you guys uh, missed. A little bit of that, or if you want to go back and spend a bit more time drawing it, if you keep an eye on our YouTube page, it'll be up there uh, shortly. It just takes a little bit of time to upload that. Um, also, check out some of the other uh, how to draw sessions that we've done, Julius here. He's done a bunch of different sharks, so if you, if you want to expand your collection, have a look at those videos and give those a go. Um, there's going to be a coloring sheet and a poster, uh, which is on the website, uh, that follows this crazy little critter um, and if you want to jump on there uh, we'll be posting that again on Facebook just so you'll easily find it but it's on the website and all the sections there um, and make sure you tune in for our next set of webinars yeah and I'll also um, I'll, I'll probably also produce kind of a little bit more of a refined version of this one um, like I did for the previous ones and I'll send that to you guys and if you want to post that on the up there as well you can do that Fantastic. Well, thank you so much again. I'm going to stop the recording. My pleasure. And, uh, thank you for having me. Nice time. Take care, guys. All right. Take care.